asthma is divided into two different categories, extrinsic and intrinsic. Extrinsic asthma, also known as allergic asthma, is caused by allergens such as dust, dander, and mold. Intrinsic asthma, also known as non-allergic asthma, is caused by environmental and psychiatric factors such as stress, anxiety, cold, exercise, smoke, viruses, hyperventilation, or other irritants. The signs and symptoms for extrinsic asthma and for intrinsic asthma are exactly the same. Common signs and symptoms include dyspnea, wheezing, chest tightness, cough, and fatigue. In pediatric and adult patients experiencing an asthma attack, you may notice that the patient is in a tripoding position and they may also be using accessory muscles to help them breathe, such as using their shoulders. In infants, mom may report that the baby has difficulty feeding or that the baby grunts while feeding. And you may notice seesaw belly breathing or sternal retractions. Asthmatics have chronically inflamed airways, which means that their airways are more responsive to inhaled particulate. An asthma attack occurs when the airway is exposed to one of the aforementioned triggers. When exposure occurs, smooth muscle in the airway constricts, which narrows the passage. The mucosal lining that lines the airways swells. Under normal circumstances, mucus sweeps debris out of the airway. However, when patients are experiencing an asthma attack, there's increased mucus production and it actually clogs the airway causing a narrowing of the passage. Mast cells mediate the inflammatory response. According to the website sciencedirect.com, mast cells are located in all body tissues, including bronchial smooth muscle and airway mucous glands. Mast cells contain a number of different chemical mediators, including histamine. When the cell is triggered, it degranulates and releases all of those chemical mediators into the surrounding tissue, which causes inflammation to the affected area. This is a normal response that occurs in instances such as when you're stung by a bee or when you're bit by a bug and there's localized swelling. However, in asthma, this reaction occurs in the airway and the swelling is out of control. Asthmatics often use an inhaler, but they may be on long acting medication as well. In EMS, BLS providers can help the patient take their own medication and they can also administer albuterol via nebulizer. ALS providers can administer a duoneb with albuterol and ipratropium bromide. And in the case of a severe attack that's not responding to medication, the paramedic may apply CPAP or intubate the patient. There are two important questions you should ask every patient experiencing an asthma attack. 
How many breathing treatments did you receive last time this happened? And have you ever been intubated? And if so, how many times have you been intubated? Well, that's all for today. If you would like to learn more about asthma, feel free to check out my resources in the description. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. Have a good night, everybody.